Hello everyone, this is Brewer and today I'll be talking about the week 4 of the Black and White Invitational Tournament. Um, if you don't know me, I am a long time Black and White player. I am just starting to record videos and make content in general, so bear with me. But I won't dwell much on that. Um, I, you probably heard my name and Jim Cole's channel because I was the person that won a game with Lapras. That was pretty cool. but. We're not here to talk about that today. Um, so yeah, let's get into it. First I'll do a, a quick recap since it's been a while. I'm sorry, everyone is sorry. We had some issues but it's all good now, okay? <laughs> um, yeah, let's go over the bracket a bit. So in round 4 we have Ruhr, me, versus Markop, Choka versus Finchinator, Sergi versus Watashi, Ryza versus Pasho, and in the losers bracket we'll have Bea versus Wake to Seconds, Behe versus Umbri, Pani versus Lax, and Star versus Fakes. Many good players, many exciting games to see, and that's what we are here for. So I picked four games that I thought it was really good, and I'll show it to you guys and commentate over the battle as well. So first off, we have Sergi versus Watashi. Watashi is also a long time black and white player. Sergi is a little, a little more new, but also a long time black and white player. Um, Watashi played in SPL last season. Sergi uh, didn't play in SPL, but he's definitely at the same level right now, or even higher. And um, yeah, let's uh, analyze this this matchup. Watashi brought a Sand team with Rotom Wash, Celebi. This is a pretty offensive looking team. Celebi might need a nasty plot. Rotom is there to grab momentum. Garchomp looks Scarf in this team, but it could be any set. Latios looks like a Calm Mind set, but it could be any set as well. It's hard to guess. Even Drill could be Scarf. I'm pretty sure this is going to be standard to our Anitar though. Or else Alakazam will cause a lot of trouble. But yeah, only Tyranitar and Rotom sets are pretty obvious here. Sergi on the other hand brings a, a brings a very unorthodox defensive team with Tang Growth. Um, this is a very exciting team to see. Um it's this type of team, this style of team, is pretty dead, honestly. Uh, you don't really see defensive sand team with fortress tangled gastrodon people usually opt for the magic ward uh, pokemon like clefable or pokemon that really don't care much about hazards like bronzong this car of course is a mainstay of these defensive teams heatran is uh, a pokemon that's kind of fallen off in the last couple of years but in the right team you can still do its thing you can still be uh a good crutch. Um, and this team is a pretty good example. A Heatran will be a, a steel type and will spread status. So yeah, let's get into the game. I think this matchup uh, depends on what Tashi's move sets and depends. So he can hold his line. Um, Gliscor might be SD as well. You need to talk about that. That could be a win con for Sergi. But yeah. Let's see what happens. Watashi's gonna lead with Rotom and Sergi will lead with Heatran. Protect to see what the Rotom is going to do. See a Volt Switch coming off. And here, uh, Watashi wants to burn the Gastrodon at some point, so he probably Hydro Pump here. And we see a Hidden Power Water. Um, Hidden Power Water is a very odd choice because, of course, it won't miss like uh, Hydro Pump does. But also, it's a lot weaker. Hydro Pump would have done around 50, um, even 60, to especially defensive trend. If this hidden power is 31, probably just 60. Yes, uh, like 55, it's like almost double the power, right? So, yeah, uh, he gets some damage on the heat trend with the hidden power of water, and Gastrodon will come out to absorb this and get its special attack boost. Watashi will burn the Gastrodon in response and then we'll get his Rotom Toxic in response as well. This is pretty important for Sergi, because Rotom can be annoying. But with a Gastrodon, it's less annoying. 
because Gastrodon is immune to Volt Switch, Veronal cannot grab the momentum it's built for. So we see a nice beam to chip the Rotom and cover the switches. Covers the Celebi switch right here. But uh, Sergi opts for a double toxic here, maybe expecting Archon for Tyranitar to come out. But yeah, uh, Celebi will be a Stealth Rocker here. And with Celebi using Stealth Rock, you would usually expect Baton Pass and Psychic and Recover. That's the standard uh, Rocker Celebi, <laughs> as you can say. like. Uh, because Psychic is a better neutral coverage and you usually want a support move alongside Stealth Rock, which is usually Baton Pass, so Celebi can also be a momentum grabber. But here we see Leaf Storm. Sergi did not expect this at all because he needs the Teeter for the Latios. If he has Calm Mind Latios, it can pretty much 6 0. But. Celebi gets the Leaf Storm off on the T turn, and that is so important for Rotashi because it weakens the, the T turn for Latios. And Sergi goes for a play for the Super Power, expecting a Baton Pass to ask through. So, pretty smart play from Sergi, but it didn't work out. But here, Sergi has a free Gliscor, he wants to get a Toxic Orb on, and Celebi is a minus 2 special attack. So Gliscor will not be fearing anything from the Celebi. Will protect to get some health back. A Celebi will recover. Uh, but she will not waste the Celebi here. He probably save it for a sack or maybe heal it on a slower Pokemon. Goes for the Rotom and uh, Sergi knocks off the Rotom, cutting off his uh, survivability completely. A toxic, toxic plus sand damage is gonna be racking up. Taunts the pings, but Taunt Gliscor is not common at all these days. But in this kind of thing, it makes a lot of sense. Uh, Gliscor can act as a style breaker of sorts with Taunt and Knockoff. There is no good switching into this uh, defensively. You can obviously threaten it offensively with Ice Beam and stuff. But defensively, defensive Pokemon uh, do not like seeing the set. It will knock them off of the leftovers, it will taunt their support moves. So this is a pretty good style breaker on top of being a good uh, support for the team. The Hidden Power Water is going to do only 42%, which is nothing. So Gliscor is able to just counter the Rotom pretty much. As Sergi goes for the Heatran, as uh, Watashi heals the Celebi, as if it's the last move is probably Earthquake, so Celebi will not be fearing any of these moves. Uh, Watashi goes for the Tyranitar, he doesn't really have a good switch in this, into this Heatran. We see on Will O Wisp instead of a Lava Plume. You would expect our Heatran to use the Lava Plume to try to fish for a burn. But with Will O Wisp, you don't have to fish. Their burn is there. So that's pretty interesting choice. I like it. Turn it will try to paralyze the Heatran. So he can kill it more appropriately. Celebi will be coming in as a double switch. Obviously, he wouldn't switch Celebi into Heatran. But that was a good call from Watashi to heal it back up. And uh, Heatran is a problem though. I don't see how Watashi deals with Heatran very well. He'll keep going Titar, but Titar has its days counted. It's burn and it's low and will not do that much damage. Whisker will come in uh, versus the Titar. And we see Rest. That's very interesting. Rest Titar with Chest of Berry. Now, this is a bit crazy because Titar. Um, you usually want Shuffle Berry to counter Alakazam, Reuniclus, and that kind of Pokemon. But Watashi uh, disregarded that and just went for survivability on the t -tar. It's an expected survivability too. And it's very interesting because it allows t -tar to check Latios and then come back to full and do more stuff. Staranitar is obviously a very useful Pokemon in most of the games. It is uh, the most used Pokemon in Black and White for a reason can do many things, you can uh, have any coverage basically, and you can check every psychic type. Obviously with, with Chest of Berry, you're very vulnerable to Focus Blast from Malakazam and Reuniclus. So it's a bit of an odd choice, especially against Reuniclus, because this team will not deal very well with a Calm Mind Reuniclus if it has Focus Blast. Obviously Excadrill could flinch it down, but yeah. Um, Alakazam obviously have a huge threat with it. I assume he's Scarf Chomp to deal with that. 
but it it's not a good way to deal with that. Um, focus blast from a life orb Zen will do massive damage in this terrain. It's pretty much kill it from full, so there is no switching to that here. Let's keep keep the game going. Uh, Latios will come in here to try to pressure this Glasscore and will take the knockoff. He really is Cobalberry, but that won't matter much because the Tyranitar is so weakened. We see the Calm Mind, no, we see the Surf, and uh, Thurgy should not have that much trouble switching into this. We see Gastrodon, this Gastrodon is not that useful in the mark. It already did its job from stopping Rotom, so if you Drake could, it wouldn't be too bad. Celebi will be coming out to check this Gastrodon as it does Toxic the Celebi. Of course, it has Natural Core, so it's not that much of a big deal. Heatran will be coming in again. Every time the Celebi is on the field, is an opportunity for Sergei to go Heatran and start spamming Lava Plume, Lobus, and be annoying. The Tyranitar might just get burned again. The rest might not have been for it much. Uh, we are back to the same sequence. Tyranitar is healthier, of course, but it's burned again. Lydos is Watashi's best chance. We'll come in here. And we'll see if it's gonna do. If it's calm mind, it's a massive problem. We will be surfing. So I don't, I don't think it's calm mind. He would have clicked it by now. But uh, yeah, Sergi's gonna father the Gastrodon again. Yes, the surf uh, sand damage is racking up on Lario, so that's a thing to keep in mind. He will be Dracoing the Gastrodon to kill it and leave it a bit vulnerable now. Tyranitar does come in to pursue it as 25%. Will the Drake kill it? No, we won't. 22%. Of course, the Lattice already ate the Cobra Berry, so it's going to go down to Teeter. Even at 25%, this Pokemon still trapped the Latios and got the job done. Very, very good Pokemon. Um, Fortress will be coming in against this Escadrill. That's just gonna spin, predicting a switch. And yeah, Garchomp will come in on the Fortress. Will also spin probably to uh, free up his Tangrowth a little bit and this will be coming in on the guard trump and that's a sword stance oh so watashi um watashi is probably scarf through in this case because yeah it didn't show leftovers so he has to be scarf through if he's scarf through uh i think yeah sergey could have seen so you could have seen that this uh, chomp, sorry, this chomp was indeed going to be Swords Dance because Escadrille did not show leftovers. There's only two items that Escadrille can use pretty much, which is Choice Scarf and Leftovers. So, I feel like he should have gone Tangrowth there, but maybe he was scared of a of a, a mixed chomp kind of thing. I guess Glasgow was a good uh, mid-ground kind of play. But it's Swords Dance and it could get another boost here and just start destroying things. We'll Outrage instead though and uh, kill the Glyscore right away. We'll Outrage the Tangrowth for massive damage, 82. But Tangrowth will stay alive and uh, <laughs> the 73% to the Garchomp, almost killing it. If he killed that, that would have been game pretty much. Unless the, the Escadrille could make a miracle happen. but. It will be um, the Garchomp will be living for another attack, and we see what happens here. Is he going to go Celebi? Saves the Tangrowth. Is it going to be what I think it is? I think it is. Uh, Celebi will go use Tough Rock here and see if he has the move. Does he have the move? Doesn't use the move. Okay, Tyranitar. Will be coming in the heat trend to absorb another lava plume and garchomp will be coming in here to pressure the heat trend but it's it can only attack once so it will just be dying okay i was uh, the move i was referring to uh celebi here could use healing wish potentially to garchomp actually i don't even know if it learns in gen 5 but if it did that would be awesome i think it does but uh yeah, if that that was a healing wish to Garchomp, that could have been, honestly, this game. If he has a fire move to hit Fortress, but it didn't come out. Uh, Garchomp did use Swords Dance against the Hatred Lava Pluming. Obviously, that's a very risky play for Sergi because if uh, if Earthquakes, he has a very hard time dealing with Celebi with Tank only Tangrowth and Fortress left. So 
that was a pretty risky play from Sergi, but it paid off. Because obviously if he if he switched uh, if he switched on a sword stance and he had to let something die harder than Titar because Titar is already dead and he cannot uh, waste a life orb turn on Titar. So that was a pretty heads up play from Sergi there, knowing that he had to counter Watashi's aggression. Uh Tyranitar will T wave the Heatran here. Uh, and Fortress will be coming out probably to spin. Yeah, Tyranitar will be using Rest, but he has no chance to bury anymore. This is a free spin for Sergi. Uh, so at this point, he won't he will not mind the Titar being paralyzed much. All he has to do is use it to enter Celebi, and he does that here and pressure Celebi with Lava Plume. Tyranitar is obviously sleeping, and uh, okay, uh, Watashi will get rocks up. Heatran will stay paralyzed at this point. Watashi can hope for a drill win. Well, Tangrove is weakened. I mean, the fact that he got rocks up is good. But it will be very hard because Fortress can take can take two hits from it and kill it in two as well with Earthquake. So Fortress will be coming in on the Titar. The sleeping Heatran is also giving leftovers to Fortress as it was lower back then. Maybe the Asco Drill could have won the game if if it went earlier. But it's still uh, Tangrove could hit Regenerator back up and tank a hit. So, um, yeah, Titor is going to back to sleep. This is pretty difficult for Watashi now. Without that Guard Chomp, I feel like he should have gotten the plus four on the Gliscor there. And then, but then of course, a yeah, Fortress could have come in. But Fortress is doing much less damage with HPI, so maybe. Maybe the the Garchomp would have uh, gotten more of go the more all the Garchomp. Even if he attacked with Blisker, that is not that bad. It took off his life orb. I think it still kills the Tangrowth of uh, four plus four without life orb. Not sure. Probably does because it's a Garchomp plus four. So yeah, uh, Sergi is gonna take this game. This is very interesting. I like this game a lot because it showcased. Uh, a bit of a diversity for and stall with uncommon Pokemon such as Garchomp and uh, I mean such as Garchomp, sorry, such as Tangrowth and Fortress and uh, they use them very effectively. Uh, Tangrowth almost never came out but when it did, it did so to counter the biggest threat for his team. I feel like this light is if it was Calm Mind that would have been really bad for Sergi because of that Leaf Storm earlier. It's very, very smart from Watashi. Yeah, of course, this is very unconventional Celebi set almost on the game for Watashi, but Sergi did it, managed to hold his offense and win the game. So let's go to the second game. One second. And here we have game two. Game two is Lex against Bunny. Of course, these two are trophy holders, amazing players. Lex won the official ladder tournament in 2023, is uh, Gen 9, and Bunny won the Grand Slam in 2021 and Gen 8. So, of course, these skills will transfer over to Gen 5. Pokemon is Pokemon, as we say, Mons is Mons. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's a, that's a popular saying from Extra Shine. Shout out. Uh, yeah. Lex brought an offensive team, uh, he brought an offensive team with Victini and Frostless, which are two exciting Pokemon to see in a high level game. Victini is not typically used in black and white because it has T-Tar, which can pursue it, and Hazards will kill it very fast. Has Getting rid of Hazards in black and white is pretty difficult, so it's not an unusual choice. Frostless is a lead, of course, uh, it's usually Skarmory that's a lead in these teams, but here we see the Frostless for the extra speed, uh, setting up spikes and support with Destiny Bond, Icy Wind, etc. And yeah, the rest of the team should be uh, easy to figure out. Maybe Choice Band, Scarf, Kirin, maybe Sub Kirin. Of course, Kirin is a bit harder. Scissor is obviously going to be Swords Dance. Latios is probably going to be Calm Mind Cobra. Bunny will be using a fairly standard Sand team with a Seismic Toad. Seismic Toad is pretty good in black and white because it can counter Rotom and act as a water resist for stuff like Starmie. Uh, of course, if you want to use uh, Celebi with 
nasty plot like offensive celebi you don't want to use it as a water resist so seismic toad is a good crutch to that and we see Escadru and Landorus as uh, pretty hard to get sets, it could be either way. And we see Magnazone as well, it's usually Scarf in these teams, but it could be Choco or Air Balloon. And a standard T Turk, it's pretty obvious to check those psychic types. And let's get into the game. Victini will be leading against Seismitoad. Victini will use Final Gambit, and Seismitoad will live and set up Stealth Rock. Victini uh, will use Final Gambit because it wants to start the game 5v5 essentially and Seismitoad is able to take the Final Gambit and set up Stealth Rock which is very good for Lax, uh, for Pony, but not that bad for Lax, we'll get to that later. But yeah, Seismitoad has a higher HP than Victini and Final Gambit is based on HP, so Seismitoad will live that attack and Frostless will come out to set up the spikes. Escadrill will come in to pressure the Frostless. There is a visual bug as I'm going through it. The spikes are not showing. Let's see if it will show now. There we go. So Escadrill will pressure the Frostless. We'll try it in Iron Head. Landorus will be coming out. There is the Iron Head. And we see Rocky Helmet Landorus. That's an unusual choice in black and white. Typically we see Leftovers or Try Scarf. But we see Rocky Helmet in this case, which is pretty smart. Gets chip on. Uh, chip, it gets extra damage on stuff, um, and yeah, uh, it's an offensive team, so you don't care about the survivability of Landers as much as you would otherwise. So it's a smart choice from Lex there, and we'll be getting Stealth Rock up this turn. Bunny will go for the Earthquake, predicting Frostless to come in, and Lex will go for the Hidden Power Ice. That's a very risky play for Lex that paid off. A Landers, of course, is needed in this game to check the Escadrill, but uh, Lex also needs to make plays to get back in the game after the final gambit. Uh, so he makes that play and manages to get some free damage on Landers. And Frostless will be coming out next turn, and Pony will be using the HP Ice, so complete outplay from Lex there. Gets an extra spike too, the two spikes, and the Cursed Body! The Cursed Body is so good here. Because the Curse Body means that Scissor has a free setup in, 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 against Landers. Landers cannot Earthquake the Scissor. Curse Body, of course, acts as a disable move. It disables your last attack, and this, in case, is Earthquake. So Landers will not be able to threaten Scissor here. So let's see what happens next. It will U turn the Scissor, probably Magnus will be coming out. And of course, let's see the set, it's Balloon. So here it's a guessing game uh, because Pony doesn't know Scissor's speed. If Scissor is jolly nature, it will outspeed the Magnezone, kill with superpower. If Scissor is adamant nature, the Magnezone will kill the Scissor and the Scissor will just look silly and it will be a pretty easy game for Pony. So this makes or breaks this matchup really, this interaction. There is, there is nothing, there is no way around it. So yeah, let's see what happens next. Uh, Pony will go for Landris, not taking the risk there, trying to navigate the fact, if the, assuming the scissor is faster, navigating that fact, and going for Escadrill to revenge kill the scissor. Let's see what he does here. He goes Landris against Escadrill, and Ironhead will come out. Good play from Pony. He knows he's not staying in ever, and just Iron has the Landris for some extra damage. U turn will be coming out on the Seismic Toad Sack, and Magnazone will come out here. This will indicate that Magnazone has Flash Gandal, not a common move on Balloon. Gladius will come out against Magnazone, and there's a Flash Gandal, it did a lot of damage. And yeah, Gladius will be pressuring Magnazone. But he saves the Magnazone, typically, and yeah, Magnazone is like a sacrifice, but in this game, it's the most important Pokemon in Bunny's team. Check Scissor, and it's a Steel type as well. If Kira starts to get crazy, Magnazone could maybe eat a hit, who knows? So Magnazone will be saved and Titar will be coming in on the Latios to finish it off. Obviously this is not Scarf, so it would just start a pursuit and it's not Cobra either. I thought it was gonna be Cobra. And Landers will come out to revenge kill the Tyranitar. Just a free Earthquake there. 
and Eskandra will be coming out now to kill the Landris and it will kill Rockslide because it's a mid-ground move. Of course Iron Head kills Landris but doesn't do enough damage to Scissor and Earthquake will not kill Landris. So Rockslide came out as a mid-ground move. Scissor will be coming here and Eskandra will miss the Rockslide which means we're back to that interaction. Uh, we, uh, we took steps to avoid it. Uh, I mean, Pony, of course, took steps to avoid it, but it was inevitable. Uh, Magnazone will be facing Scissor here. Who's faster? Scissor is faster. So, Lax will close off this game. Um, of course, Kirin could have won if uh, even if Magnazone was faster and if it killed Outrage. It was Choice Band Kirin, if it was Choice Band Kirin. But uh, I'm gonna drag the screen a little bit so you can see the chat. So, uh, there's things to unpack here in this interaction. Uh, basically, uh, Lax was not choice ban, he was power herb Kirin, which may not have killed Zone, and Zone could have flash cannon. And also, Lax figured out that uh, Magna Zone was in fact slower than Scissor when the flash cannon hit the Latios. I'm gonna back, going to go back to the replay here and go back a bit. So, sorry. Uh, here, uh, so Lax used the U-turn against Magnezone, and Larius came in a flash cannon, and Magnezone used flash cannon, and it did 49. And this means that Magnezone is modest according to damage calculation. So that's very good information. From here, Lax knows that this a scissor do just win the game, pretty much. If this is not like HP Fire or Celebi or something, so yeah. Uh, you just skip to the end here because that was, that was it. Uh, yeah, this game was an example on how to use information from damage cogs. Of course, Pony tried to avoid that uh, that Magnezone versus Scissor scenario, but could not. And Scissor was faster because the Magnezone was modest, and Scissor was adamant about opting for plus attack or special attack natures. So, next will come out victorious in this game. Uh, well played, very well played. Let's see game three. And here we go with the third game. Shoka versus Finch. Shoka is a long time French player, has been around for a long time in the community, uh, builds a lot of teams, uh, builds, uh, built some of the sample teams on the forums, and of course is a very strong contender for this tournament. Uh, hasn't played SPL for a while, but Definitely a very capable player. And on the other side we have Finch. Finch uh, needs no introduction. Uh, we all know and love Finch. He's the one of the faces of competitive Pokemon in general. So let's get into the game. Both players bring a Rotom Wash kind of offense. Uh, Shoka opting for a more traditional sort of sand uh, build with Celebi and Rotom and Garchomp it's usually like it could be like Scissor but uh, Garchomp works uh, this this team is hard to figure out the sets because it's really versatile usually it's Scarf Chomp and then support Celebi so the Tyranitar can be the, the Thunder Wave set and Drill could be uh, any set as well usually like Swords Dance but it could be Scarf the Chomp could be a breaker as well, as well as Scarf. It's really hard to guess the sets correctly in this team. But it, it works, the core works, and it's pretty good. We see the Finchinator's team. Um, it's a Rotom Wash offense with Gliscor. Gliscor is a bit unusual in these teams because Gliscor is a more defensive geared Pokemon, but. Um, it's definitely got its place as a support Pokemon for breakers as well, having that U-turn. Or it could be an offensive set to surprise, uh, you wouldn't expect Gliscor to be offensive here. And uh, that's a, that could work in your favor, uh, Gliscor could uh, snag out a win with a Swords Dance. So uh, yeah, in this matchup will be decided on who uses their breakers better. Memoswine obviously a big threat for Finch and uh, Garchomp is a big threat for Shoka if it's Yachiberi or 
Celebi could be a massive threat as well. If Latios gets trapped, Celebi will be having a field day. The Nasty Plot, Giga Drain. Now that's gonna be very hard to stop. So let's see who plays better. I'm gonna start the game. Garchomp will be the lead against Rotowash. Turn 1, we see a trick from Finchinator and an Outrage for Ashoka. This means that this is a Choice Band Chomp. We see it was uh, the Rotom trick, the Choice Band. Uh, this Rotom was aiming to get Celebi because uh, Celebi is a common switch to Rotom. And if the Celebi gets tricked, that's a, a huge threat for, for Finch just crippled. But also get the Rotom there. If you got the Rotom on the trick, uh, that would be very good news for Memoswine and Escadrill. But Shoka was just choice pin and just wanted to get as much damage on the enemy team as possible early on. There's a, no better time to use this Pokemon than just start with. So Shoka ends up winning the exchange here. Just gets a free damage on Rotom essentially. And does uh, give it choice pin, which is obviously useless on Rotom. So let's see what Finch does, he goes Gliscor, takes an Outrage 40%, that's a very bulky Gliscor in the physical side. We'll shrug off this Outrage with ease, probably set up Stealth Rock here. And as Shoka goes to Rotom, we'll be uh, pressuring this Gliscor better because Hydro Pump will hurt physically defensive Gliscor a lot. And yeah, Finch will be U-turning away for Latios, which is the water resist here that can take this hydro pump and will draco the rotom rotom takes it and uses volt switch all right entire blue looking to trap this latios this is very good news for shoka getting rid of that latios for celebi as uh, obviously celebi is not afraid of latios if it's full hp but latios would uh be uh would deal damage to it which is not what Shoko wants. Uh, the damage Lightus does may put it in Ice Shard range, may put it in Iron Head range. Shoko wants that Selby to be free to sweep. So, Lightus will get trapped here. In a classic black and white fashion, a pursuit comes out from Shoko. We'll see another one. We see rocks. And this is, a, this is an old school kind of technique. Basically, um, you pursuit the Latios once and then the Latios is very low HP but you don't really need to attack the Latios anymore you just use Stealth Rock and then obviously your Tyranitar is going to die but you set up Stealth Rock and trap the Latios at the same time which is basically killing two birds with one, one stone uh, most uh, cheaters back in the day used to be Stealth Rock but now most are not but in this team it fits perfectly so Mamoswan will come here to get rid of the T-Tar, no reason not to sack it, it's not useful anymore, did his job. And now we see Escadrill coming on Mamoswine to Iron Head, we see Gliscor coming on Escadrill. Of course this is a physically defensive Gliscor so it's gonna shrug off this Iron Heads. And we'll take another one and use Earthquake, Drill is very low, this Gliscor is very hard to kill for Shoka, even if he gets it low. He could like spam protect eventually and get some health back enough to to check the guard chomp, but obviously uh, Shoka has no way of pressuring this Glasgow outside of just Iron Heading here. Maybe he could have uh, gone for a sword stance on protect. We'll see. He goes for protect. Uh, no sword stance, just Iron Head and Glasgow. To be able to take this iron head but it gets crit that's very lucky for shoka just getting rid of that gliscor that was spamming protect and healing and um, keeping the escadro sack because many of these games um it's a sack war right what we call a sack war so uh everything is frailed weakened and uh, the person that has more sacks will win the game in the end a lot of end game situations, sorry, a lot of end game situations end up, uh, end up do end up at that like the sack war. So Escadrill staying alive here is pretty good for Shoka, and of course Lisker is dead now. 
Uh, Mamoswine will come in and use Ice Shard, will kill the Rotom. Mamoswine is a big threat to Shoka's team. And uh, as we as we stand, as it stands, only Celebi will take a hit from Ice Shard here. So Infinitionator is gonna look for a, a Mamoswine win angle. So Tyranitar will come in on the Celebi, he uses Nasty Plot. And uh, this Tyranitar could live at Leaf Storm if he's very bulky. So Shoka doesn't take the risk, switches out to Landorus, takes a Crunch. Crunch did not do that much damage and uh, he uses U-turn on Mamoswine, Celebi comes back in, still lives an Ice Shard, so maybe he fires off a Leaf Storm here, let's see. Nope, he goes for the Nasty Plot. And uh, now, okay, so you could nest, you could Leaf Storm and kill this Escadrill if you're Shoka, but then uh, Tyranitar could come in and guarantee damage on Celebi, and that will make Shoka lose to uh, Mamoswine. So, uh, let's see what Shoka does here. He goes for the Hidden Power of Fire, trying to kill it with Hidden Power of Fire, but doesn't get the kill. And Iron Head does a lot of damage. So, Pitchinator will look to win with Mamoswine here. Uh, Ice Shard will pretty much clean. Oh, this Pokemon can live. Ice Shard does kill Celebi here. And. What will Shoka do? He goes Landorus. And will a shard kill? No! Ice Shard does not kill Landorus. And Landorus finishes off the Mamoswine and Shoka wins. This is one because Garchomp cleaned the other two. Wow. Um Okay. This this game was a little insane. Of course Shoka got lucky with the Iron Head crit. But I think Finchinator made a mistake in the end uh, by not just sacrificing his Rotom and coming back to Mamoswine to uh, get rid of the Intimidate. But what he didn't account for is that Landorus would lift the Ice Shard. And by the crunch damage on the, uh, the Tyranitar cost to Landorus, you could guess the Landorus EVs. Uh, this, is a, this must be a very bulky Landorus, right? To take only 19 from a Tyranitar crunch. That has to have a lot of defense. I didn't really cock uh, exactly, but I feel like if Finch cocked the Landorus there, he would have known that this Landorus would have a chance to live and would have sacked the Rotom to come back and just Ice Shard. And then Landorus, if he comes back again, you have uh, taken damage from Stealth Rock and then there was no way he's gonna survive. Of course, Ch a Chomp could survive after, but then you just sack Tyranitar. So, yeah, uh, that was it. Uh, that was that was game three. Um, yeah, that was that was a bit crazy. Of course, uh, uh, the crit was pretty bad. But let's move on to the next game, game four. And here we have game four: Star Master versus Fakes. And. Yeah, to introduce the two players, Star Master is probably the best player on Smogon to have never won a trophy. Like, he plays every single tier in the Pokemon Showdown universe, makes playoffs of everything, but hasn't won an individual trophy yet, but it's due. Um, Star Master is also the winner of the last edition of this very tournament. He won Black and White Invitational in 2023 against Zoan in the final. Very, very strong player. Very incredible player. And the other side, we have Fakes. Fakes is a long time old gems player. Used to be most of more of an ADV main uh, or DPP main. But now he's been venturing to black and white and making a very big impact on the meta game and on, on plays in general. He did 9 and 2 in the last SPL, was the best player of the last SPL in black and white. So, very very strong player there as well, this is a, a, a very high level match, very very high level match. So, let's get into the matchup. We see another Rotom offense type of team, this time with Scissor as the main breaker. Uh, this is pretty obvious that this is SD Scissor, I don't see any other demons filling that role. And we probably see either Scarf Landers or Scarf Drill, and yeah. I would say that's about it. I 
don't think I can guess much else from this team. And then Fakes will have a Dragon Spam with a Volcarona. Uh, if you watched the last video that Pang covered, shout out Spang, amazing player. Um, Mag uh, Drag Mag Spam used to have a Magnezone and Dragons, but now people are experimenting with different Pokemon other than Magnezone. He covered Obama Snow, and here we have Volcarona to fill that role. Uh, Magnezone of course gets rid of steals, but other Pokemon might pressure the opponent harder. And for an offense, that's what you want to do. Magnezone unfortunately is a Pokemon that gives a lot of space to other threatening Pokemon, which is Landers, Escadrill, Keldeo, Garchomp. And why not just use another offensive Pokemon that covers other other sides of the defensive defensive spectrum, but also applies enormous pressure. Such as Volcarona, such as Obama Snow. Obama Snow obviously having an advantage to chip things with Hail, but Volcarona is a win condition, it's extremely strong, and is the choice here for fakes. Also tops with Jirachi and Latias, and probably Yachi Chomp and DD Knight, and a standard Star. Well, now let's see how this matchup goes. Of course, a Star Master will look into get Stealth Rock up ASAP, and fakes will prevent that from happening. All trying to kill as many things as possible. Larius will lead for a star, Chomp will lead for fakes, star wins the lead matchup there. Dragon Pulse comes out for star, fakes U-turns Larius and has to sacrifice a Pokemon. Uh, star will realize that this is most likely Scarf Jirachi, so if he attacks again on the U-turn he gets a free kill essentially, and fakes is, has his hand forced. Because it's Dragon Pulse, not Draco Meteor, if you use Draco Meteor, then Volcarona could come in and just set up on it. But it's not. Obviously, it could have been Sash Chomp, but if you use Sash Chomp, uh, he would take the Latios death every time. If it, if it meant Fix got no rocks. So, yeah, good play from Star. Gets a free kill. Fix chooses Latios to the sacrifice. It's not that useful in this game. Jirachi will come back for another U-turn and it's gonna U-turn the Rotom here and Eject Button triggers. Eject Button is an interesting choice for Rotom. Rotom's entire role is a momentum grabber, right? Well, you go to Eject Button, it can grab momentum instantly. You can literally just switch it on attack. So it's a very interesting choice. Of course, that cuts off the longevity that Rotom offers. This Rotom uh, does die pretty fast already. Without leftovers, it dies even faster. So, Landers will be coming in against the Jirachi. Will probably get look to get rocks up. Starmie will come in. Starmie uh, Star reads that Starmie will come in and uses U-turn. Fakes, of course, doesn't want to let any chance of rocks getting up. As if they do, the game is pretty much lost. So Scissor will come in to pressure the Starmie with pursuit, maybe. Fakes will go to Volcarona, try to get a burn on the scissor, of course the flame body ability. And Fix uh, doesn't think Volcarona will sweep here because uh, nothing can really weaken the Tyranitar and the Tyranitar will check Volk. So it will be good to try to burn the scissor with the Volk. If you're not gonna win a Volk, you can use the, the contact aspect of Volk. So uh, Bug Bus comes out here, yes, and does get a defense drop, which means Tyranitar will die to the next one. So that was pretty fortunate for Fix. gets rid of the Tyranitar, and uh, Latios comes in to revenge the, 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 the Volk. Does use Draco Meteor here, and gets a crit on the Jirachi. So that's two lucky instances, one for each. Uh, uh, Fix used Bug Bust on the, on the Tyranitar, and that meant the Tyranitar died, and now a Draco Meteor on Jirachi means that Jirachi dies, so yeah, uh, they committed Creed, sorry. And now, uh, I think Fakes really wanted this Jirachi because it offered a Healing Wish, and Healing Wish was pretty good in this game. Healing Wish would allow uh, Volcarona or Dragonite to have a second life and potentially sweep the, the Star Masters team. So let's see how Fakes react to this. It will be going Starmie to pressure the Latios. 
and we'll Thunderbolt the Rotom to deal as much damage as possible. And Garchomp will be coming on the Volt Switch. Of course, Fix wants that Stealth Rock up. The Stealth Rock will allow Dragonite and Volk to be able to try to win this game. Um, especially Dragonite, right? Because the Outrage will want to kill the Landris and kill the, the Drill. Yeah, uh, Stealth Rock is important for Fix this game. So you'll be getting them up here. And Hydro Pump will do 47 to Garchomp. Let's see what Fix does. Star goes to Landorus to get the Intimidate. And a Swords Dance to see from Fix. And Star will have to choose a sacrifice here. Uh, of course, uh, Landorus, depending on the EVs, I think it could take this Outrage, but I'm not sure. But uh, obviously, Fix will be Outraging here to try to get a kill. And Star uh, lets the Landorus die. I think Star assumed that Landorus would live. I don't think Star would have ever sacked the Landorus if he thought he would die. So that may have been a, a, a mess up on the cock there for Star. Because uh, Landorus is pretty important to intimidate the Dragonite. But uh, it ends up going down and Lattice will come in. Yeah, I think, I think if Star, Star knew that, that Landorus was going to die there, he always sacks Rotom, right? So it's a mess up on, the, on his part. And Lattice will come in, use Dragon Pulse to get rid of the Garchomp. Starmie will come in again to pressure the Latios. Ronom is gonna come in here to be sacrificed to Starmie. And uh, yeah, let's see how this end game goes. Scissor comes in to Starmie, pressure it. Of course, there's two ways to pressure the Starmie. One is Scissor and the other is the obvious Scarf Drill here with Rock Slide. But Dragonite will be surviving Rock Slide with ease. So, he opts to go Scissor, just uses Bullet Punch, and we'll see the burn. And Scissor kills Volk, and we see the burn. And this burn uh, is very good for Fix because now Dragonite is free to come in and get a Dragon Dance off. And we'll be trying to win this game with, with Dragonite. And Dragonite does get the Dragon Dance, and it's Leftovers, that's huge! Because Leftovers allows Dragonite to keep the multi-scale on sand. And here, the multi-scale will protect against an Escadrill Rock Slide. So that's huge for Fix. Usually Dragonite is using Lumberry or Yachi Berry on Dragon Dance sets, mostly Lumberry. But Fix is using Leftovers, especially to, to really... Uh, uh, be good against the sand matchup and sand is annoying for dragon span because it does cut off multi scales but not this one power punches the Latios gets rid of it it's not a sub B knight when you see leftovers sometimes you can assume that it's sub DD uh, sub DD D claw roost but that set is pretty outdated nobody really uses it anymore uh, this is a very offensive Dragonite with Leftovers, which is a great set. Escadrille will miss the Rock Slide here, and that just cements the victory. Of course, I think uh, Fix won this game anyways, because uh, uh, Scissor will not be able to kill the Dragonite after a Rock Slide. He could have hoped for a flinch there, that, that would have done it for Star. But yeah, GG's, uh, Fix played this really well. He knew that he had to to go for the burn on Scissor, so that's a that's a window for the D Knight to set up. I think uh, Star should have sacked the Rotom against Garchomp. I think if he did, uh, Landorus would be able to to come in and Dragonite, get an Intimidate off, get some HP, and <laughs> Power Ice, and then Scissor could come in and Bullet Punch. So uh, yeah, that that definitely did matter a lot, but. Also, the the luck was uh, both both players had two lucky instances, right? A fakes with the drop on Tyranitar and start with the crit on Shirachi, uh, kind of even it out. But I think I think the 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 drop was pretty big. The crit was pretty big. It's hard to tell which one was more important, honestly. Uh, I guess uh, I guess the the Drake crit was more important because Healing Wish was gonna be awesome in this game. So, before we call it a day, let's go over the bracket. As it stands, 
we're near end of round four. And Ruer, myself, Choka, Sergi, and Pasho advance to the winner's bracket. And Markov, Pensionator, Watashi, and Ryza down to the loser's bracket. And in the loser's bracket, wait two seconds, Behe, Lax, and Fakes advance. And in the round five, we're gonna see Markov versus Finchinator, Fakes versus Watashi, Lax versus Wait to Seconds, Razor versus Behe. Very exciting games there. I hope uh, you guys are enjoying this content. It's been a pleasure making it. And please leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. If you didn't enjoy this video, please leave a comment as well. Everything uh, is appreciated. We're here to deliver the best content we can for you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Bye bye!